We're now going to take a look at moral methods. This is important for two reasons. Uh, one is sort of general ethical reasoning, being being better at it. Uh, secondly, is, is also for the paper. The paper is, for this course, is writing an argumentative essay on ethics. And so there's no assumption that you've written a paper in philosophy before, especially not in ethics. And so you'll need the tools of moral methods, moral argumentation, in order to do this effectively. So let's take a look at ethical reasoning. Now, the approach that I'm taking, which is not the only one that can be taken, is a moral issue approach. In this context, an issue is a matter of dispute with two or more distinct sides. And if you don't have at least two sides, you don't have a, have a dispute. Now, in this context, an issue is not a psychological issue, such as having an irresistible urge to dress up like a giant possum and attack people with a plastic lightsaber, which would be presumably a psychological issue, or maybe something really cool, uh, depending on how one looks at it. And a general issue could be something pretty minor, like whether Sally should buy a new laptop or not, or it could be something you know, very, you know, dramatic and important for many people, such as whether one country should go to war with another. So it can range from very small things like, should I have an extra slice of pie to should we go and kill lots of people? And so issues have a huge range. Now, since this is an ethics course, we're concerned with ethical issues. And this is, you know, an issue in general, so it's a matter of dispute with two or more distinct sides. And since it's an ethical issue, it's got a moral component. And so it will involve a, as one would suspect, an ethical aspect to it. So for example, whether capital punishment is morally acceptable or not would be an example of an ethical issue. Whether one should morally uh, cheat at a game, ethical issue, uh, whether morally we should go to war with another country would be an ethical issue. And you can make almost anything into an ethical issue by just kind of sticking in, is this morally acceptable or not? Is it ethical or not? Now, our objective is to resolve this matter. So we're trying to resolve the ethical dispute in a rational manner. People do, of course, resolve ethical issues or attempt to resolve them in various other ways, such as yelling, uh, using you know, weapons of mass destruction, baseball bats, guns, etc. But we'll stick with the sort of philosophical approach, which is using reason. Now, in the approach that uh, I take in this course, and again, this is not the only approach to it, I begin by looking at the, the facts specifically the relevant facts. And so kind of a first step in dealing with an ethical issue, once, once you've picked your issue, like where you're deciding to uh, debate about or discuss, is sorting out the facts that are relevant to this moral issue. For example, if you're working on the subject of the ethics of censorship, of you know restricting or banning certain works, one obvious area to look would be you know, in the areas of, say, violence and other, you know, bad behavior. And here would be various factual concerns, such as if you're talking about, say, restricting violent video games, one important relevant fact would be the factual matter, the factual issue of whether video games actually have a causal role in violence and other bad behavior. Now, in some cases, the relevant facts, the facts that matter, will be in dispute and you'll need to resolve a factual issue, a dispute over the facts, a dispute over what's true or not. As another example, uh, consider capital punishment as a moral issue. Now, the factual issue of whether capital punishment deters you know, criminal behavior or not is a factual dispute, a factual issue, and is not itself ethical. It's not an ethical issue, whether it deters or not, that's a factual issue. But it is in dispute. People, there's not general consensus that capital punishment deters or doesn't deter. Another example, the amount of uh, damages sustained by the you know film industry from copying movies. Now, whether it's ethical to you know, copy or perhaps steal to load it a bit, you know, movies by copying them, that's an ethical issue. 
but whether you know the damages are a certain amount of you know dollars or any damage at all would be a factual issue and this is in dispute i mean everyone are, agrees that yeah there's probably some you know some cost to the industry and people just I mean, lots of people copy stuff but there can be rational debate about the extent of the of the damage now in other cases there'll be facts that are relevant that are not really in dispute that you I mean you can always find someone who would say you know i don't believe that but there's no sort of meaningful significant uh, controversy controversy over the over the facts for example it's relevant to the ethical issue of whether you should copy, you know, video games and movies, etc. you know, as pirate them as one would say, but it's, there's no disagreement about whether this can be done. You know, it's pretty easy to copy stuff. As another example, there's great moral debate over abortion, but no one disagrees about the issue, the factual matter that it involves killing. No one says, no, but it doesn't involve killing at all. Yeah, that's not something people dispute. And so the thing to focus on would be relevant facts that actually are in meaningful dispute. Now, people can agree on the facts, but disagree about morality. And this you know, should seem fairly, fairly obvious. For example, it could be agreed that as a matter of fact, that a person did lie. But people could disagree about whether the lie was immoral or not. Also, people can agree about morality, but disagree about the facts. So, for example, two people could both agree that things that are dangerous and harmful should be controlled, you know, perhaps by the law. But they could disagree about the, the facts of the matter, about whether violent video games do actually cause harms. So how do we resolve factual issues? Well, since this is an ethics class and not a you know, critical thinking class, we won't go into much detail on this. But there are essentially sort of three main ways to do this. The first is empirical investigation, uh, direct investigation of the claims to determine their plausibility. Uh, this can be done in some cases. For example, if for some reason you wondered, could software be copied? That's easy enough to check on Google. So empirical investigation is going and looking. Second is authority, essentially using what we'll see in the future, an argument from authority where you use experts and documentation to determine the facts. For example, if you're engaged in an ethical debate about abortion, you may look at the facts of human development as part of your argument. And you might cite as an authority a, a standard medical text, which you know, list the stages of development. Now, authority, of course, comes with its own controversy because people can disagree about who is an authority that should be trusted and who is credible. And we'll discuss this in a bit of detail when you look at the argument from authority. Thirdly, you can argue the facts, obviously, with arguments. You can present arguments for or against a claim being being true for example um, one could argue that capital punishment deters not by say going to authorities you know been looking at the research but one could argue sort of um, along the lines of well people don't want to be harmed as socrates you know, said long ago and if people are threatened with death for certain crimes one could argue this would deter them. It would be a threat, a credible threat that they, they would take into account. Now, of course, you could argue back against that, namely that the credible threat, you know, deterrence value requires the person be engaged in sort of a rational calculus when they're acting and that they be aware of, you know, the probabilities and have a good estimate and sit down and say to themselves, what is the probability that I'll get away with this crime? What is the probability that I'll get caught? What is the probability that I'll get executed? And typically that's not going to be the sort of person that usually gets charged with a capital crime someone who carefully calculates everything generally is well not always obviously but typically is not doing that and of course um one could argue that going through that argument doesn't doesn't support this because when people commit crimes they don't do that calculation typically and you could also bring in factors like well capital punishment um, 
may deter but of course this only makes sense if it's deterring people who would commit the crime so if we're killing people who didn't commit crime then you know by accident or by bad intent that would be a problem as well so when it comes to the facts you need to determine the relevant facts that are in dispute that actually matter if the important the most critical facts are not in dispute then you don't need to argue them because there's no real fight there when in doubt about whether you have to dispute them or not one thing to do is sort of you know you can do some research on the issue and to see what people actually fight about or from a practical standpoint from the paper uh, you can ask me and i'll say yeah this seems to be pretty settled you don't really have to worry about the facts here or i'll say well this is pretty controversial so you'd want to look at the at the facts and try to argue in support of your view of the facts now depending on your approach to the case you may not be focused on the facts at all you may be focused on other ways of arguing and so depending on your approach to your topic you may or may not have to resolve a factual dispute as well 